Welcome everyone to episode 70 of the Missing Pieces podcast. If this is your first time watching or listening, my name's Greg, and this is where I sit down and I discuss my life, Lego, and anything else that's on my mind. And I say it all the time, but I'll say it again. This is my favorite thing that I do every week, and I'm very thankful that you're here with me. So thank you for joining in on this week's episode. And speaking of thank yous, I want to thank our new patrons that joined us this week. There's a list of them here. We've got Space Time Brick Studio, a longtime sponsor of Brickatech Live and just a, a great supporter. Thank you for joining us. We also have Brian. We've got another repeat offender on here as well. We've got Jim Rolf who joined us for the year. We've got Mine in Motion, DJ who joined yesterday, and Nathaniel who joined today as of the day I'm recording this. So thank you guys for supporting us over there on Patreon. If you'd like to support this podcast, you just like what we're doing here and you'd like more of it, including Tuesday lunch and Lego streams and Friday night patrons only streams and other secret videos I upload on Patreon, the link's down below. That's enough self-promotion for me, but while we're on the topic of self-promotion, this is actually like the perfect segue into the first topic that I want to talk about. I'm just like really proud of myself for, for somehow doing this segue that I had no plans of doing. I want to talk about self-promotion a bit. I talked about last week, I talked about Instagram and some things that I don't necessarily like about it, uh, like mainly the fact that I feel like it's just kind of self-promotion of what I could see on YouTube because I follow a lot of Lego YouTubers, of course, because these are like the people that are in my space and I like to see what they're doing. And sometimes I'm like, I want to see something more than just like the thumbnail of your video with a link in the link in bio or whatever they say. I'm not, I'm not hip like these Instagram hipsters are, but I started thinking about it this whole like promoting yourself thing. And I had an opinion on this, and this is, this is literally seven days ago, I had an opinion on this. And as of today, and this isn't spurred on by anything anyone said in the comments. In fact, I don't think anyone necessarily commented about my, my thoughts on Instagram specifically. We talked a lot about people's motivation on it uh, regarding like why, why you would post on there. And there's a lot of reasons, but the whole self-promotion thing, the more I think about it, I really do feel like is a valid reason to post on Instagram, right? Like people that follow you on Instagram, assuming that you are a Lego YouTuber or whatever you are, maybe you're an artist, maybe you're, you could be anything. I believe that in life, not just on Instagram. You can be anything you want to be. Don't let anyone tell you differently. The people that follow you, they're following you for a reason because they're interested in what you're doing, right? They, they want to, they want to know what you're up to. They have an interest in you. And if you want to post a picture of your thumbnail of your video and let your people know that you have a new video out, I feel like that is actually providing a service to those people. And if that's something that they don't necessarily want or like, or have, uh, an interest in, they can either not click on your link or they can scroll past it. They can unfollow you. There's a lot of options. No one's twisting your arm to, to be a part of that. Right? So in my mind, like it's, it's not a harmful thing. It's in fact, it's the ops that it's very harmless. And I want to share this not only because my opinion changed on this and like, I, just to let you know that this is how I feel. And like, the more I think about it, I, I kind of agree that, the, that it, it's fine, but I want to share this mostly because I think it's powerful to have an opinion on something. I think it's good to have like your, your thoughts, but I also think it's good to leave that open, right? Like you don't, the worst thing you can do is be stuck in your ways and never change your opinion. Even when there's information that could be on the other side, that's like, well, here's probably why you're wrong. Even if it's a subjective thing like this, it, I think it's good to, to keep an open mind, I guess is all I'm trying to say. And it's weird how you can just, you know, feel something about something, some way about something. And then just, just shortly later, you can be like, you know what, maybe, maybe I wasn't, well, yeah, I wasn't right about that. Maybe I'm wrong. It's a powerful thing to be able to say you're wrong and to say it in front of a public audience like this. It, it I don't want to say takes courage, but it, it shows that you're, you're at least open, right? Like, and I, I feel like I am, I think about other people's opinions. I think about the data that I have and a lot of things that we think it's, it's just in our own minds, right? Like you, the only thing that you know in this world is what you've somehow absorbed through things that you've seen or read or heard or heard or read, I should say, or things you've experienced. And the combination of those things forms everything that you are. And sometimes that, that can make for good things and sometimes bad things. I've talked before about my opinions on school and how sometimes, especially with public schooling, I, I have a negative perception of that. And that is because of my experience in what I considered to be not the greatest school system or teaching system, I should say. That doesn't mean that all schools are bad, right? And I shouldn't put that out there like, this is why you should hate school or this is why school is a waste of time or whatever the case is, that's not true. 
And I, you really have to take people's opinions with a grain of salt. And I hope that you do that with me. Don't put too much stock into anything that I say. This is the only thing that I can tell you is how I feel at a certain time, things that I'm doing, things that I've done, mistakes that I've made, things that have gone well. And you can take whatever you want from that. If there's one thing that I would take, though, it's the mistakes that I've made. If I share something that's gone wrong, It'd be a great opportunity for you to be like, all right, checking that one off my list. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna try that. But keep an open mind. That's my little bit of advice to tech here and very early into this episode for you. Keep an open mind and and don't judge others too critically. Just judge yourself. Judge how you are. I, I love, I shop at, from Life is Good. They uh, are not sponsoring this episode, but I wish they would because I love their clothes. Fantastic quality. I'm not hyping them up for any other reason, but to say there's this shirt that they have that says, be the person your dog thinks you are. And I think that's a really powerful saying because it's like your dog, regardless of, of how despicable of a human being you are, you might kick your dog. You might be nasty to other people. You could be like the worst person. Your dog's going to love you no matter what. They think you're the greatest person in this world. You open that door, in most cases, I would think, your dog is so happy that you're home. It's like the greatest moment of their life. Be the person your dog thinks you are. That could be the title of this episode, although I don't think anyone <laughs> would watch it for that. Uh, but life is, life is good if the executives are watching this. Uh, call me. I love your clothing. Um, anyways, let's go on to the next topic here. This is actually a follow-up from last episode as well. This is on the topic of motivation. I asked you guys at the end of episode last week, what are those things that motivate you? What's the stuff that keeps you from being motivated? What are the things that drive you to do the stuff that you either want to do or need to do? Mostly need to do. I guess motivation to do like lay on the couch and watch movies for most people is you don't really need to be mo motivated to do that to sit down and listen to your favorite podcast every week missing pieces <laughs> you, you don't need maybe you don't maybe you need to be motivated to do that i don't know but to like go to work to do projects at school to go out and mow the grass to help your friend change a tire on his car i'm completely out of out of ideas here what are those things that motivate you? And there were a ton of responses on this. And I was going to sit down and with Mrs. Brickitect and do an extra pieces this week. We, we ran out of time. But what I thought I would do is I read through all of those messages that I got. And I have a list of items here that are the things that motivate you, the things that motivate the Brickitect community. And I thought I would share those here. And you can see where you fall into this these, if you fall into any of these categories or where you stand in the top, in the terms of motivation, and maybe some of these things could help you become more motivated and maybe think about things that can motivate you. I should also say that this is a Lego podcast in some regard, and we'll be getting to that here in a minute, but we're getting all this stuff out of the way first. This is the, this is the big brain stuff, maybe. Anyways, the topic of motivation. The number one thing, or the first thing that I have on my list is a sense of accomplishment. Multiple people said, the sense of accomplishment is this, is the thing that motivates them. It's the feeling of doing something awesome, to having it done, like anything that you could put some time or effort into, and then when you can sit back at the end and be like, I did that. That's a good motivator. Another thing, being inspired by people you admire. I see that a lot from you guys on this channel. People that maybe are where you want to be, things you want to do. If you share similar interests, you see a guy that has a YouTube channel where he's like a an expert snowboarder, and maybe you just got a snowboard two days ago, and the thing that motivates you to go out and practice and really bust your butt in doing this thing is because you want to be like that guy and be as good as he is someday. That motivates you. Inspiration inspires people. Oh, God. <laughs> Inspiration motivates people. Oh, motivation motivates people. Jeez, this is terrible. Pressure from obligations is the next one. This is kind of on the, the negative side. So like you have to you have to pass your classes to go on to the next grade in school. So that pressure, the obligations that you have to be there to study, to take the test, those things motivate you. Holding yourself accountable to others. So you have a family that you need to provide for. That's a good motivation to go to work. You have some kids that you are in school with that you're working on a project together. Everybody needs to pull their weight as much as I think all of us that have done group projects, we know that that doesn't happen. And there's there's one person or several people that have to step up to fulfill the other slackers' jobs. We've been there, but that that motivates us as well. Having interesting opportunities is a great motivator. So something falls in your lap. You have this opportunity to be uh, American Idol <laughs> or whatever, right? You have this opportunity and you're like, I'm not going to blow this. This is my shot. It's like the movie Eight Mile with Eminem in it. You know, you have this chance to become the next big rapper. You only get one chance to blow. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm going to start this episode over. This is terrible. Okay, let's go on to the next one here. I'm not starting over, by the way, guys. Having to-do lists can be a technique to be motivated. So you got your your checklist there with the big square box that you need to put that check mark in when it's done. That can motivate you to get things done. Seeing progression, this kind of falls along with sense of accomplishment, but if you are like the guy that wants to become like the next big, uh, you want to become the Tony Hawk of skateboarding, moving over to different boarding examples. You see that before you couldn't even stand on a skateboard, but now you can stand on and you can do some kick flips or whatever you, um, you can see that happening and you're like, that motivates me to keep doing this. And then there's an, one last one here. It's like the, the avoidance factor. You want to avoid pain and displeasure. You go to work. You're motivated to go to work because you like living indoors. You like having food in your stomach. You like not being, you know, it's like the, the bad things in life are the things that motivate us sometimes. And oftentimes it's a combination of those things, right? Like the whole concept of work. You go to work because... Hopefully you want to, hopefully you at least in some way enjoy what you do for a living, but you go there because you want to make money so you can survive and take care of your family or yourself. And then you want to go because you want to uh, get some things with that money and enjoy your life outside of work, whether it be uh, buying some food or a Lego set or whatever the things are that you find enjoyment in. Th those those things kind of balance. And it's it sucks when you are more on that negative side, like you're doing this because of the negatives and the positive. But if you can kind of shift that over a little bit, sometimes that helps. But I just wanted to share that on motivation. It wasn't quite enough to do like an entire episode unless I le read every person's comment verbatim. But I feel like that kind of gives us an inkling as to what motivates people in our community. If you have anything else that you'd like to add to that, I would love to hear it. But there was one motivation comment here that I felt inspired by. And I thought if I read this to you guys, maybe somebody out there could take something from this and it could have a little bit of power for you. This is a little bit of a personal message from Julian. I'm going to try not to get upset or not upset. I'm going to try not to get emotional while I read this. I'm going to do my best here, but this is, this really struck me. So I do want to share this. I should have probably waited to have this at the very end, but here we are uh, just a little fraction into this episode. And we're going to go into this here from Julian. He says, Hey Greg, once again, great episode. So to answer your question on what motivates you well, this past year in 2020, a lot happened. First COVID happened and there was some uncertainty with my job and wondering if I was going to have work as a painter, but all that worked out. Then I had to move out of my apartment. I was living in with my wife for three years to move in with my in-laws. That's painful. As that in itself was a difficult decision we had to make because we were so used to having our own space and privacy, but we did it because one, my wife was pregnant and she was one month away from her due date. And two, we wanted to save money to pay off our debts and save up for a house. I applaud you for that. Then, unfortunately, we had to rehome our yellow lab Mickey. It wasn't working out with my in-laws having him there. That probably was the toughest decision I had to make, especially for me, because me and him had really special bond and I became a little depressed there for a while. Then my daughter was born. And let me tell you, Greg, my daughter has brought so much joy and hope for me and my wife. And that brings me to my answer, I guess. My daughter motivates me to get out of bed and go to work, sometimes an hour away. I'm thinking about it and I'm doing this all for her to possibly give her a greater life. I believe as parents, we all should want that for our kids. No matter how hard life can get, there's always something that you care about deeply that will mo have to motivate you. And having other people to motivate you helps tremendously. That's why I watch your videos and listen to your podcast because it really does motivate me. And I, I appreciate that. I'm glad that I could be a little part of that, but I agree with what you're saying there. And I somehow, I want to say like 80, 85% survived that without getting emotional. Uh, having those obligations to other people, that can be a huge motivator to have something that is so important to you, like a, a daughter or a, a wife or a, or a husband or whatever, your mom, your, somebody out there that relies on you. It could be your cat. Your cat relies on you. That's the reason that you should keep going. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to go that far with this, but take it for what you will. Motivation is an important thing. And I do feel really bad for people that I, I did see some people that just lack motivation. And I know 2020 was a tough year for that, where it's like, oh, how do we get through this? What's like, what's the, what's the, the happy ending that's at the end of this? What's the, the, the sunshine and the rainbows that I have to look forward to. And you always have to find that thing because even myself, I found that like if I don't have a goal or something that I'm working towards, if I don't have a purpose that I'm pushing toward or working hard at, 
I find myself getting into that spot where you get kind of depressed because you're stagnant. And I, I just, I can't live that life of being stagnant. I always need to have that, that thing. So the thing that motivates me, if I had to answer it, it, it's a couple things. It's my family. I want to provide for my family and do the best that I can for that. But it's also, I guess, I guess an obligation to you guys too. Like I do a lot of YouTube videos because I know that people find enjoyment in them. Like it's, I said before, it's easy to take like a day off or two days off, but I think about the, the person that I don't even know that's like, they get out of school and they're like, dang, I, I, I can't wait to watch a Brick Tech video. And I'm like, well, here's your, here it is, man. I hope, I hope you enjoy it. Hope for a couple minutes you can escape whatever it is that may have been like terrible today. And I hope you can kind of just get into that episode and, and just, just enjoy it. Maybe this podcast is that for you. So I have an obligation to my family. I have an obligation to, I guess, the general public. I like the, the accomplishment and I like the satisfaction that comes from making things. I love producing videos and the, like taking a day of recordings, like in my vlogs and like kind of forging it into a, a story, like a, maybe a 15 or 20 minute story that someone could sit down and kind of get like, the value out of. I, I love doing that. I like the creativity around that. There's so many things that I've, I've kind of formed my life around that really just like, I think works for me. And it took me a long time to get there. So don't think that you, like if you're not in that spot right now, don't think that you have to be. People are always trying to figure out what, what their life is or what they want to do. You just try new things and, and see what works and what doesn't. And it, it'll eventually, it'll get there for you. Don't stress over it though. Just, just do what you love to do. That's my biggest advice for you guys. I have other advice coming up here in a minute, but I thought I would, I would share that message and, and give you my perspective on it too. And I appreciate all of the people that commented on that. It was, it was some good reading material. And if you guys would like to read all of those comments in their entirety from a lot of great people, you can go back to the episode 69, you jokesters, and you can read down through those. It's, it's some really great stuff. We're going to get into some other topics here now, as I take another drink, this one's, this one's drying me out a little bit. We need another sponsorship here, but I want to talk about something I, it's been on my heart for a little while now. I haven't gotten around to talking about, it, but I think you guys will appreciate. And it's the topic of opening collectibles. It's something that I'll tell you my stance on it. If I have something that is maybe somewhat rare or something that is really cool, like I know people collect, you collect anything, you collect Funko Pops, action figures, Lego sets. We'll just limit it that for now. Just keep this simple. Some people will collect those things and they get it, they keep it in the box, they keep it mint condition, they put it on a wall, they put it on a shelf, they, they look at it, they admire it, they appreciate it, and that's as far as it goes. And that's totally fine, I'm not judging people like that, but for me, and I guess I'll take this into the world of Lego since that's where we're typically at, and we're trying to actually prove that this is a Lego podcast. If I have a Lego set, and say it is somewhat rare or hard to get or whatever, there is that temptation there for me to be like, no, I can't open that. I can't, I can't. That's, it's worth way too much money for me to open this up and, and build it and enjoy it. But then I think about what good is it if you never plan to sell it? Like it makes sense if you have this really collectible thing and you're like, well, five years from now, it's gonna be worth like six times what it is now. So then I'm gonna put it on the market and sell it and I'm gonna collect the money and I'm gonna go get something even better with that money. I don't think that's what most collectors do though. I think most collectors buy things to have forever. And that's why I have been able to relieve myself of the Lego box scene because I kept the boxes because I went to Lego library, but I determined that I could have a Lego library without having the boxes. I could just have them in like storage bins or, or pull out drawers and have a, a three ring binder of all my manuals. And that becomes a library. But I thought, you know, someday I'm going to sell these Lego sets and it'd be worth way more if I had the boxes. But the truth is I'm never probably going to sell these Lego sets. And if you're not going to sell something, why not enjoy it to its fullest? I take action figures as an example. If I see an action figure in a box, the first thing I want to do, and maybe you're like this, maybe you're not, I want to shred into that box as fast as I can, get that thing out and pose them around and enjoy the heck out of it. And I, it, this action figure world is a dangerous one, especially Transformers, but I, I feel like that is where enjoyment comes from with collectibles, is, is having it in your hands, feeling it, moving it around, playing with it, building it, whatever the case is, who cares about whether it can look good in a box? But to some people, again, I'm not judging. This is the same thing we talked about earlier with the Instagram thing. This is just my experience and how I feel. If you really love having a wall of Funko Pops behind you, or if you're into the Black Series figures and you like to have a wall or have them on a shelf, and it doesn't bother you to have, have them posed or played with, and you like the protection and you, the packaging is like a part of the collection for you, 
I totally get it. I'm just saying like from my perspective, especially with Lego sets, like Clark, we have this set here. This is a Ninjago set if you're just listening to this. Available everywhere the podcasts are available, guys. This is fine, you know, like I can sit there and be like, wow, that looks like a cool Lego set. I just, I want to rip into this and I want to build it. That's what I want to do. And for me, like, it's not about the money. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Lego collector. I wish I, I probably should be. It'd be the smart thing to do. I'm not a Lego collector that is doing this. Well, I, I'm not collecting Lego as a business, but I'm making videos of me collecting as a business, if that makes sense. So for me, if, if I get a Lego set that's, that I bought for a hundred dollars, that's worth $300 or whatever. And I think it's, it's, it's a neat set and I want to build it. I'm going to build it. Right. Whatever. Um, you can't take it with you, I guess, is, is where, where this is all going. Do you want to die someday and have all these things sitting in boxes that, that that's all it was? Like you never experienced outside of looking at it. Like if, if looking at this box brings you joy, this is going to be a little aggressive. If looking at this box brings you joy, why spend all the money on it? Why not just make this the wallpaper on your computer or take your, get a poster made of it or something or have it, you know, like have a picture in your wallet. Why, why spend all the money on it? If you're never going to do anything with it, I guess is where I'll leave that at. I'm, I'd love to hear from your, you guys on that. Cause I know there's gonna be people that feel very much on the opposite end of the spectrum regarding that. So let me know what you think about the world of collecting. Maybe there's something that you collect. I, Cause we know it in, the, in our hearts, we're all collectors here and possibly hoarders as well. Where do you stand on that? Do you keep everything mint? Do you feel like it's it's better enjoyed opening it up? Do you do you avoid collecting it all because you you don't want to have to make these decisions and maybe you don't have the the finances to do it? I think it's all all very valid and I'd love to hear from you guys on that. The next thing I want to talk about as we transition to the next topic that is YouTube related. I want to talk to you guys about YouTube recommendations and how bad they do of that. Or maybe good they do with that. I have a Lego channel. As you may know, it's called Brickitect. You're watching this on that channel or on any podcasting platform where podcasts are available. Call me. Anyways, yeah, I don't know what it is, but all I do is watch Lego videos. And I watch a ton of Lego videos on this channel. And for some reason, YouTube doesn't do a great job of recommending Lego channels to me. I get recommended like all kinds of stuff, stuff that I have not much interest in. And if you find yourself in that position, there's a thing you can do on YouTube's homepage where you can click like not interested in the video. Because what YouTube does, and this is the thing I don't get. We talked about this on the one of the live streams this week. We're streaming every day at 8 a.m. Eastern on Brickitech Live if you guys want to come over there uh, and hang out with us. Kind of like this, only Clark Man's there. It's a little bit more chaotic. We're building sets usually. There's a live studio audience where we can chat with them, which is fun. If I had that on this, I'd be way too distracted. These podcasts would be three hours long and it would be all over the place, which is why these aren't live. Otherwise, they would be. Why does YouTube, back to my YouTube rant here, why does YouTube always recommend like the same videos to you every time you get on? So it's like you got on YouTube on Tuesday and it's like these six videos or whatever you kind of saw. And you're like, yeah, I'm not really interested in those. And you watch something else or whatever. You get on the next day, it's like the same videos. Be like, yeah, and whatever. Next day, next day, next day. Eventually it's like, dude, I'm not watching that video. I'm not interested in that video. Like you already showed it to me six times on my homepage. I'm not gonna watch it. It's so frustrating, especially when it's like something that is kind of eye catching. So you always notice it, but then you never click on it. But YouTube thinks that you want to, you know, their algorithm I'm sure is, is much smarter than my reptile brain is or whatever. But eventually you just gotta like pitch them something new. I wish it was like almost like a dice roll where every time something came up, but there was one video this week, and I, I would love to hear from you on this as well. I know I try to squeeze comments out of you guys all the time here because I love hearing back from you and viewer feedback or listener feedback. Who has watched the Toys R Us 1991 video this week? I don't know how many views this freaking thing has, but I'll, I'll try to link it down below if I can find it. You know what? Let me take a look here. We're going to do a quick search on YouTube. I found the video. It's titled Toys R Us 1991 11 27, just a completely random title. But it was uploaded one week ago, has 68,000 views. I thought it would be way more than that because when I was in my chat the one day and I talked about this video or seeing it, like there were multiple people that were like, I got recommended the same video. And YouTube does like this crazy thing and it's even weirder. I thought that video was like an older one, but it just came out a week ago. It's even weirder, weirder when it's a video that was like six years old or something like that. And all of a sudden, like you get recommended and you're like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to click it. And then you go down through the comments and every single comment is from like today or yesterday or whatever, because all of a sudden the YouTube algorithm was like this video, people want to see it. And then they put it out there. And it's really fun when it's one of your videos that you made like years ago. 
like I had videos that you, you know, it's just a regular video that you make, nothing special about it, nothing fancy about it. It was just like a regular vlog. And then like a year later, YouTube's like, <laughs> and they blow the thing up and it's awesome to be on that end of it. But it's really weird how that whole thing works and the, the algorithm's a crazy thing. If we could just figure it out, we could all be YouTube gazillionaires. But until then, you just got to keep, you got to keep putting stuff out there and, you know, hopefully something pops. And when it does, it really does help. But I just thought I would share that as a, as something we could speculate on these YouTube recommendations. And if you're a Lego enthusiast, like what are they doing on your recommendation page? You're getting a lot of stuff that you don't watch. You're getting stuff that you do watch. Maybe I'm not giving them enough clues. Maybe I need to like more videos, dislike videos. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't feel like they do a great job of recommendations, at least for me. So I thought I would share that out there. The next thing I want to talk about, I should say this episode is mainly like random thoughts that I had throughout the week that I put into my notes app on my iPhone. So this is going to be discombobulated. Uh, the next thing is is titled The End of Snow Days. And this is because this week Clark Man had, well, there should have been a snow day, but unfortunately those things don't exist anymore because now... The schools are back in, at least in our area. They've they stopped doing remote because kids were failing miserably because apparently they lack the motivation to get their work done. When you don't have a teacher breathing down your, your back and making you do your schoolwork while you're sitting in class and you're left on your own to go do it and to make sure you're there and to be participating, kids don't do that. So once again, motivation plays a role in this, that the negative side of motivation, you have to be forced into doing things. So school is back in. And this week there, there was a pretty bad... Uh, sleet slash uh, ice storm and school would have been closed but what they did is they just told everyone to stay home everyone now has Chromebooks that they do work on so it was everybody do school from home day which is kind of cool in one regard because you don't have to make that day up like in May or at, in, on Easter vacation or whatever when the weather is actually nice out you, you get like that extra day off or whatever and you don't get just some random Tuesday off but it kind of sucks because I remember as a kid and maybe some of you guys still remember this, that you'd get up in the morning or the night before you know that there's snow coming and then you get up the next morning and it's like, oh, do we have a delay? And back in my day, because I'm an old man now, we used to have to turn on the TV and the news channel would have the scroll at the bottom with all the schools listed alphabetically. So you'd be waiting for your school district to pop up. And then you saw it said two hour delay or it said close and you're like, yes. And then you had, knew you had the day off and it was amazing. It's gone now. Kids don't have that anymore and it's really sad for me to think about that because it's like, that was like a, a, a part of my childhood a little bit. These kids today, man, they're missing out on a lot. Movie stores, we've talked about them before. Like all the, like the physical nature of things, Toys R Us from 1991, you can't have that anymore, at least in the United States. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a bummer. But again, you'll, you'll thank yourself later when you don't have to go to school in the middle of June or you have that extra day off some, some day later when things are better. But it still sucks. Anyways, let's uh, go on to the next topic. I just wanted to share that and, you know, get that out there. Uh, next one is, oh, this is a personal thing that I need to work on. I need, and I might even be guilty of this already in this episode. It's eliminating the words cool and pretty cool from my vocabulary. I notice lately, anytime I try to do any kind of Lego review or, I, or, or a lot of different things, I'm like... You know, say I'm doing a Lego review on something. Say I'm reviewing this minifig, and I'm, I, I say something very uh, objective about it. Like this minifigure is wearing a black jacket. Then I add the phrase after that, which is pretty cool. And on the back, it has a Lamborghini logo, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty cool. And that's cool. And I, it aggravates me when I'm editing, and I've been trying to just cut that out. But sometimes we have these things in our in our speech patterns. And to me, I guess what you'd call them is fillers that are unnecessary and they don't add any value to anything you're saying. Like I could say that same thing. This minifig is wearing a black jacket. I don't need to make a judgment on it. I mean, I could say that I like the black jacket because it has a Lamborghini logo on it. But I don't need to make a subjective argument that that's pretty cool. I don't even need to say the word cool because it just seems so dumb. It seems like pointless. And I, we have a lot of things that we say like that. Uh, some things are filler words that are unintentional that maybe even worse, like saying, um, uh, I do that a lot too, that I'm trying to stop doing, especially when you're free floating a conversation like this. But it's hard to eliminate things from your vocabulary. Some people say like, they say like, like is one of those things. You could say 
uh, fill, you could use filler words like frankly or to be honest, to be honest with you. Like it's these things that go, you could completely cut and it adds no value or it, it actually takes away from what you're saying. So I'm going to do my best to stop saying that's cool, pretty cool. I don't need to make judgment calls like that and I don't need to add that into my videos. So if you see like little splices in any of the reviews that I do, like we did these Overwatch things this week, and I felt like I was saying that way too much. It's just like a comfort thing, I think. You're like, oh, this is this is an Overwatch set, and it's got a missile launcher on it, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's just, you just, you can't. So one thing that I found when editing is that you find these things much easier than you do when you're just speaking regularly. Because you could be saying things that you don't even realize. But when you have to sit back and listen to yourself, and you hear yourself say pretty cool or uh or um or do another habit like I do, which is stringing all of my sentences together by saying the word so, it starts to get to be a little too much. And sometimes you just need to slow down. I find I get a little hyped up and I start going too fast and that results in that. You can have some dead air. You can calm it down. You can bring the pace down a little bit. People will still be there. Simple as that. You can become a very calm podcaster. You don't have to be hyped up, <laughs> but uh, it's a work in progress. But I just wanted to, I wanted to share things that I'm working on too, you know, like, right, there's a like. We talk about successes. We talk about wins of the week. We don't often talk about our failures or things we're struggling with. So I like to put those things out there. Maybe, maybe you're doing something like that, that you just realized you're like, oh, shoot, Greg, I do the same thing. Let's work on it together. We can get better at that. Speaking of making things better, Baratect, RIP Baratect. It's gone. Yesterday, the gentleman came. That un he uninstalled all of the countertops over there in the sink. It's all gone. Monday morning, the granite countertops come in. So my Monday afternoon, we're going to have Baratech fully functional. It's going to be a place for Fast Food Fridays, potentially. Snack Attack, live streams, builds. It's going to be a great spot. We can drink some ice cold six packs of sodas over there all kinds of stuff like that. And I, I invite you to join me on Brickitect Live where we do all of our live streams. I want to, this wasn't really in the agenda, but I've been, I feel really called to do this type of content, this, this commentary type content like this where we just sit down and chat about things, whether it be Lego stuff, video games, life, uh, really anything. I, I just, I love doing this. And I like it even more when there's somebody to like bounce ideas off of and you guys entertain me as much as I entertain you. I feel like probably more coming this way, honestly. So I don't need to say so. Or do I? I don't know. Anyways, I just I just thought I'd share that. I keep thinking about all the time, like how I really do feel like my future is in podcasting slash live streaming slash commentating, live building, stuff like this. Like I, I'm just, I love doing this. I talk about my passion for video making and I talk about how much I love vlogging and that's really fun. That's fun for me. But this, this is like, since 2018, this is like called me and I've resisted it after getting obsessed with it. I resisted it for a year or two and now I'm coming back and we're doing these morning streams every day and I, I love it and Clark loves it too. It's time for us to be together. We're getting sets built in the backlog. We're entertaining it started how like 80 people and then like a hundred people and now it's like 140 people and we're talking about eight o'clock in the morning eastern most of my audience is in the united states most of them are on the west coast like half the people that watch my stuff are on the west coast it's 5 a.m for those peeps so it's a terrible time to live stream like from a like a a viewer perspective or like a business perspective or whatever you want to say but that's like when i i love to do it and there's people in other parts of the world that are really underserved at that time and like people on the east coast maybe getting ready for school and then you got people in in the uk and europe that's like midday for them so sometimes they're they're free sometimes they're in the work it's a bad time but it's good for me and i feel like if i stay consistent with this and i and i just i just keep providing as much value as i can i can find a way to do anything that i want to do and be successful at it and i truly believe that and i believe that for you as well Find the thing you love to do. Go all in on it. Put everything that you have on it. And it's going to be easy to do because it's what you love. And if you do that good enough and long enough, the time and pressure will, will conquer all. I'll leave it at that. I want to get into the next part of our episode, which is personally my favorite part. 
This is listener feedback. We're going to start here with our good buddy, Brixar, who has a comment about Bricklink. Last week I talked about how I love Bricklink. I'm getting addicted to it, which is a dangerous thing. But I also talked about how I wish the sellers would automatically put on the shipping and stuff and I could pay for things instantly instead of getting an invoice. Because last week I got an invoice that I completely forgot about and I don't check my email very often. And it was like four days and the seller messaged me like three times and be like, hey, are you going to like pay for this thing? And I'm like, oh, shoot. So uh, I, I was talking about like, why don't sellers, some of them have like the automatic checkout or whatever that just puts a price on there. And I threw out there, why not just put a price that maybe even above what you think it's going to be. So then it, it covers it. And if it's more then you can refund it or just keep it as a seller. Brixar has a comment about that. He says the tricky thing is the weight of the items. If any item doesn't have the weight, the Bricklink shipping calculators won't work. That being said, most sellers don't have instant checkout, haven't enabled it. It's not the most user-friendly thing to set up, but it's a huge time saver. Plus the buyer knows the cost before they commit to buy. Like you even said, put something in there. If it's too much, you can refund. Okay. So that makes sense. Like it's, it's, it, it's a pain to set up, but you know, it's one of those things that maybe if you put the time into now, like today, like you sit down on a Sunday and you're like, okay, let me, let me get this friggin' thing set up. Maybe the next six years of you doing Bricklink, you don't have to do all these invoices and crap like that. Maybe that would be nice. So, uh, one person I saw commented that you can see which stores have it because there's like a lightning bolt or something or a green arrow, or maybe I'm just making up, uh, superheroes. I'll, I'll look for that because I pref much prefer that to having to go through and, and get an invoice later. And I, last, maybe two weeks ago, I made two orders and one had it, one didn't. So I don't know what the scoop is. Next comment. Thank you for the comment though. Bricks are, who'll be featured a little bit later in wins of the week. He, uh, next one comes from Mrs. Brickinet. Huge fan of Mrs. and Mr. Brickinet mateys. He says, I'm trying to convince Chris, who is Mr. Brickinet, just to buy the minifigs for two reasons. This is on the topic of uh, I'm getting into the world of Marvel minifig collecting. I know. Feel sorry for me because I, they're wicked expensive. And I was debating whether it's worth it to get the set at $90, for example, or just to pay $40 for the minifigs only and which route to take. So Mrs. Brickinett says she wants to buy just the minifigs for two reasons. We're rubbish at getting around to selling the rest of the set, and we don't have the space for all the other builds. I'm not having much luck, though, she says. Over Christmas, we watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which triggered a couple of purchases. It's very addicting, as is eBay and Bricklink Hunting. I agree. It's a dangerous thing to get into. If you guys want to spend a lot of money, start looking at Lego sets that you don't own and dreaming about wanting them, especially the minifigs from them. If you just are on like a Marvel Watch-a-thon, it's, it's uh, dangerous. Speaking of Marvel Watch-a-thon, oh my gosh, I almost forgot watch Attacked. We watched, where did I leave off last week? We watched Civil War this week. We watched Winter Soldier. Love that. We're not in that order. We're watching in timeline order, or in, uh, yeah, timeline order now. So we watched Winter Soldier. We watched Civil War. We watched both the Guardians movies. I think I'm getting these out of order now. And I think the, I think, I think it was, it was Winter Soldier. I had a list last week. This week, I'm, my brain is melted. We watched the two Guardians movies, which I love. I love the Guardians movies. In fact, I like Guardians 2 more than Guardians 1. That's an unpopular opinion. We watched Civil War. Our next movie is Black Panther. I'm trying to get the Spider-Man movies so I can watch Homecoming again. I know I'm out of order on that. And then we're going to watch Far From Home, which I have yet to see. And that's going to be great because if there's a Spider-Man movie that exists that I haven't watched yet, I don't know how that happened. But... I'm thoroughly enjoying the Marvel Watchathon that we are on, and I am also enjoying WandaVision. I will not be sharing any spoilers here about WandaVision. All I can say is I was all in on WandaVision after the first two episodes, even more in after three, and now the fourth episode. I, I'm loving it. Or is this? Th yeah, yeah. This is the fourth episode that we watched because they shed two episodes the first week. It's a really cool show. It's really good. Please, if you have if you have Disney Plus, watch it. If you don't have Disney Plus, get Disney Plus. It's the best value in entertainment. Right behind, no, I was gonna make a joke about my Patreon. I would go for Disney Plus well before my Patreon. Um, but it's it's really good stuff, and it's uh, the show inspired us to go on this Marvel Watchathon. So that's the, the craziest part of it, and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm still looking at Lego sets, and I'm still like acquiring stuff, which is it's dangerous. This whole this whole world is dangerous, but. Yeah, probably doing the minifigs part of it is kind of like probably the safest bet, especially if you really have no interest in the set or you're not going to do anything with it. Or if you think that you're going to get the whole thing and then sell off the build without the minifigs and then you're not going to do it, like Mrs. Brickinett said, I, I get it. So you're, you might just be better off getting them. Plus, they're easy to store. Little tiny things, you can put them anywhere. 
Next comment comes from a new Patreon detector by the name of Jim Rolf, who's a repeat offender on here in a massive way. And he always has great comments, and I always share them. He says, 2020 was both a good and bad year from Lego minifigure perspective for me, Greg. I went down the same dark road you're going with the Marvel figs. I said to myself, I wonder if I have all of the Avengers figs. A simple question, an expensive answer. Yes, now I have all the uh, Marvel figs. Minus two New York City Toy Fair ones and a Comic-Con Spidey, I think. But for sure it was a hit to the budget as many I did not have in the sets I owned. I made the same. I made the exact same decision as you. In some cases, it's easier to buy the fig and be done. In some cases, nearly the same cost to buy a set, depending if you want the brand new or used. In some cases, I bought the figs and found the sets cheaper later. The struggle is real. I decided it was more than if it was more than 50% of the cost to buy just the figs. I bought the set. You can always build the set and have fun with it regardless of the figs or to use the pieces and mocks. My opinion and just what I did, it's easy to get lost in this rabbit hole, my friend. I agree. I hear you. I like your your numbers there, though, 50%. So if the mini figs on a $100 set are worth $50 and the set's 100 then I guess you just get the set. But if, if it's more than that, like if the mini figs are 60 and the set's 100 you might as well just get the whole set. It's tough. It really is. And... Um, Chickens flying out there distracting me. But I appreciate the comment and the advice. If you guys have any advice on minifig buying, let me know or let me know your strategy. I'm just kind of I'm following my heart there. And if the set is cool enough or the set's good enough to justify, I'll get the set. And I've I've been I've been back and forth. In fact, one of the sets that I got was incomplete because I wasn't really concerned about the set, but it was only a little bit more to get the incomplete set with the minifig that I wanted than it was just to get the minifigs. So hopefully that makes sense. But I appreciate that comment. Next thing we have is a is kind of a random question, but a good one. He says, uh, from Lizard Eggnog, says, maybe next podcast you could touch on investing. Any stocks you're really interested in? Just a thought. Well, this week I'm really interested in GameStop stock. I've been following the story behind that. I won't get too much into that here because this is not an investment podcast. I'm not a licensed stockbroker or whatever. So I don't want to give you any investment advice. I'll just say... And I've, wanted, I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time because I think I could get some people into this, but I don't want to steer you down the wrong path. I've been really into options trading the last four to five months, and I've been doing pretty well at that. And I would love to talk about that with you. I'm trying to convince all my friends to get into it, and I've been telling them what I've been doing and how I've been making money in the stock market. I sound like one of those really bad infomercials or one of those YouTube ads that come up, but I've been, I've been doing options trades, and I've, I've, I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. I, I make very safe bets, if you want to call it that. And so far, I have a 100% winning record over the last four months, but I don't take much risk. I'm, I'm risk adverse in most cases. And I only play with money that if it all burn up in the stock market, it'd be fine. But that's that wouldn't be the case unless the stock market crashed, at which point I think we'd have a lot more concerns than just that. So I, I don't think I'm going to go into talking too much about it as much as I've wanted to over several different episodes. I have a couple live streams where I got into it a little bit, but I think it's beyond the spectrum that most people really want to get into here. Honestly, I'm not really sure what you're here for other than me sharing my story. So maybe it would be okay there. I just need to have big disclaimers like this is just me. This is what I do. But then again, I don't want to be wrong on this and then, or not realize it yet and be like, Hey guys, this is what I'm doing and it's working. And then everybody does it. And then they're like, Greg, you, you, you made me lose my my life savings or something. I, I don't want that on my conscience. So I'm going to keep most of that private, I think, for now. But oh, I would love to talk about investing in finance. I love it. I love talking about personal finance so much, oh, especially the world of debt, credit cards, mortgages, car loans, leases. I can talk about that stuff for days because it's the world that I came from and the world that I escaped. So that'd be a great topic for me, but not for most people that watch this, I don't think. Next comment here. we got a couple advice attacks here. I've been hesitant to give advice in the past, but I'm going to do it for these guys. First one is from The Brickhead. He says, hey, Greg, I'm a kid who loves Lego and really wants to keep uploading YouTube videos. My parents, however, don't feel that I should have a YouTube channel. What do you think I should do? Well, that's a tough one because your parents or your guardians or whatever, they, they control what you do. If they say you can't have a YouTube channel, you can't have that. I do, and I understand where they're coming from. Maybe they don't want you putting yourself out to the public like that. Maybe they don't want you making videos inside their home. Maybe they want to keep things private. Maybe they're concerned about your privacy. Totally get it. And I'm going to side with them on this. I think you should listen to your parents. I don't know how old you are right now, but why don't you, why don't you just make videos for yourself right now? Pretend as though you're making them for YouTube. 
get your practice in, make your video, do your Lego review, your stop motion, whatever that thing is that you want to do, edit it up, have it done and just let it sit. Someday it could be kind of fun to upload these videos from when you were, you know, 13 years old or whatever, 10 years old. And you know, when you're 18 or whenever you move out or go to college, your parents can only stop you from doing the things you want to do for so long. And I get very upset when I see parents discouraging kids from following their dreams. There was one comment that came in. In fact, I'll just read it here. That kind of got me upset a little bit. He says, this is from uh, Karthik. He says, hey, Greg, thanks for the motivation advice. Uh, I'm 11 and I don't have any motivation because I have lots of family problems between my dad and my mom and I feel really depressed and I never feel happy anymore. Also because after reading some books, I was inspired to become a detective and my father said it won't earn any money and you're useless to be a detective. And that got me fired up. You guys know that when I when I hear from parents or from kids whose parents try to turn them down on the things they want to do, I just get so angry about that because your parents should be your biggest fan. Like if Clark told me, I, there, there's some there's some point there that you have to be realistic, right? Like if Clark told me he wanted to be the next Michael Jordan, I may not be like, all right, dude, you got this, but I'm going to be like, hey, get your sneakers on. We're going to go play some basketball. Hey, let's go watch a basketball game together. Let's, you know, what, whatever that is, I would be like totally like all in on it, regardless what it is. He wants to be a astronaut. We're going to go to watch some SpaceX launches. We're going to go to some museums. We're going to like, like I'm going to invest in that, even if it is just a, a silly dream. And I'm not saying that being a detective is that, but the worst thing your parents can do is, is tell you, you either shouldn't or can't do something. It should be the exact opposite. And that gets me really fired up. And I apologize for that. But I just, and you can, I hope you share this with your parents because I have no tolerance for parents. And if you're watching this mom or dad, you're doing your son or daughter a huge disservice by telling them they can't be what they want to be. It's, it's unacceptable. Anyways, I'm just, I no, this is not happening. But nonetheless, that's how some parents are. And they, I, maybe they, they're thinking they want the best for you and they don't want you to go down these paths that are, that they don't deem to be worthwhile, but who's to judge, right? Like what if I told my parents I wanted to someday be a guy that sits at a, a, a desk with a camera on him and talks about his life? You think anybody would have told me that that could be something that I want to do? I kind of self-police myself in, in a way. I wanted to be a graphic designer for a living, but that thing in the back of my mind said, well, Greg, you're never going to get a job in that. You're never going to be good enough to get, to get work. So I was like, okay, I want to be self-employed. So I'll go into business administration and take that path. And, you know, it worked out for me, but had I taken that graphic design route, that's something that I would literally use every single day of my life, whether it's making thumbnails or editing videos or whatever it is that would have really helped me. And I should have taken that path. And I spent a lot of money on college that ended up paying out, you know, with getting a job and stuff. But I feel like the graphic design route would have paid out as well. It just, it would have been a longer, longer turnaround time. But I say all that to say, parents, if you're listening to this, kids, if you're listening to this, one, encourage your kids and kids don't be discouraged by your parents. If they tell you you can't do something, just, just tell them to, no, <laughs> don't tell them that. Um, let's take this back to the YouTube thing. If you want to make YouTube videos, don't, don't let them discourage you. Make, make your little videos you want to make. Don't put them on YouTube. Don't, don't not listen to your parents. But just know that your parents can only control you for so long and one day you're going to do the thing you love to do. And if that's making YouTube videos, you're going to do it. Just hold off for now. Next one for, for Advice Attack comes from Padawan Bricks. It says, hey, Greg, I need some advice. You come to the right place, maybe the wrong place. I'm in middle school right now and I really don't want any of my friends to figure out that I have a Lego YouTube channel. I don't think they will make fun of me, but I still can't bring myself to show them my channel. I know you say be yourself, but I really don't know what to do. I, I totally get this. I never told anyone that I worked with until I put my two week notice in that I had a YouTube channel. And even then I shouldn't have told them that because it's none of their business. Your, your friends don't need to know you have a YouTube channel. If you don't feel comfortable telling them that, just do what you love to do. And then someday be like, hey guys, I have a YouTube channel. I've got a million subscribers and this is what I do for a living and I love it. Or they'll probably find you before then. I guess that's the only risk that you take. I, if you don't want people to know you have a YouTube channel or people making fun of you is I, I would worry a little bit if I was in school right now that kids would find my channel and make fun of me or whatever. And I totally get that. And I have worries for Clark with that. I think with Clark, it's either going to be people think he's like really cool because he has a YouTube channel and maybe that'll happen early on. But as kids get older, kids get meaner and maybe like towards middle school, it may not be a thing. So I'm fully prepared to like, 
if we need to remove all the videos, I'm totally fine with that. Like it is what it is. Um, but I hope that's not the case. I hope your friends, if you have true friends, they're not going to make fun of you. In fact, maybe your friends would, be, would really enjoy getting on with you and making some videos. You guys could stream together. It could be a hoot. Who knows? But as of right now, if you're hesitant, I probably wouldn't tell them. But if, if you could kind of like see if they have any interest, be like, hey, Johnny, have you ever like, have you ever watched like Lego videos on YouTube? I don't know if you guys share your Lego interests together, but you could be like, hey, have you ever watched any? Like, what do you think about that? Like, feel them out and then be like, hey, well, I've been making some videos and I've got 17 subscribers and my last video got, you know, 10 views. It's pretty cool, right? And maybe he'll back you on it. But if you have to worry about what your friends think of things that you're into, I don't know if they're true friends. So consider that. Let's go on now from Advice Detect. If you need any advice next week, throw it out there. I'll give you some dubious advice the best that I can and um, maybe lead you down the right or wrong path in life. Let's go on to some wins of the week, starting with my good friend, Jabbo, over at Brixar. He says, win of the week. Su successfully cleared off our table for building a Lego town, and it looks like Jacob is going to get back into building again. The thing that has actually amazed me is the addition by subtraction. But making the table smaller it's going to be easier to do more. That's interesting. What I love most about this, though, isn't the fact that you clean your table. It's that your son's going to be down there and getting into the hobby, and maybe you guys can do it together. Because my favorite content you guys make is, is when you're together. I love the interaction. It's cool to see, and maybe people like Clark and I for this reason, it's cool to see like two people that are so in tune with each other that the chemistry is just flowing off the charts. And I see that with you guys. So I'm proud of you for getting the table done, and I can't wait to see your town. I'm sure it's going to be amazing. You definitely have the inventory to fill it up. Next comment. Thank you for that one. Next comment or feedback comes from Pointless Ninjago Posts. My win of the week. A few past, the past few years, I've never really knew what my flair is. There never was really anything that lit my spark under me. Until this week, I finally found my flair. He's talking about passion. And that's making stop motion videos. I don't get many likes or views, but it's so fun. And I really couldn't have done it without your motivational words about how you're debating if you should make a YouTube channel. You should just go for it. Well, that's cool, man. I'm happy to be a little part of that, but you're the one that did it, and I, I couldn't be happier for you. I'm proud. Proud. It, nothing more powerful, I think, than telling someone you're proud of them. And I'm proud of you. Next one goes to Swag Turkey. He says, hey, Greg, my one of the week was finally starting my own podcast on my channel. I've been wanting to do it for a few months now because my university, I haven't had the chance to. Finally found some time to sit down and record an hour-long episode that I was really proud of. Partially inspired by this podcast, though it isn't about Lego. Seeing you do this every week inspired me to finally make my own. Jeez. Double proud. We're, we need like some proud animations or something to happen here. Proud of you, dude. Swag turkey in the house. Next one comes from Pickbrick. Says, my one of the week is I got an A and a test and got my grade up. Also, another one of the week is when I finally started to sort my Legos. I finally started to sort my Legos, but it's going to take a while, but it'll get done someday. And thanks to your advice, I'm starting to be more consistent on my YouTube channel. It feels better having one video a week than not uploading for two weeks. That's what I tell you guys. You just got to show up. Number one key for success, consistency and being there. You can do it. One last one here comes from Els Flint. It says, win of the week. Building ridiculously large IKEA shelf unit on my own during lockdown without being crushed or heart packing in. And I like that too. I'd say any win of the week is a win when you stay alive to tell about it. So on that, guys, that concludes this episode of Missing Pieces, episode 70. We've been doing this for a long time. I've never loved doing it more than I love doing at this moment right now. If you survived this far into the podcast, I appreciate you sticking with me on all of this, whether it's about Lego motivation, if it's about wins of the week, giving advice, talking down to discouraging parents, pondering life's biggest mysteries. That's what we do here. And I just, I could not be happier doing this. And it makes me really happy to know that there's peeps out there that enjoy this. So Hope you did enjoy this episode. If not, you probably left a long time ago. But if you'd like to support this podcast, you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts. We're trying to get to the number one slot for missing pieces. If we can possibly pull that off, I have to beat out some Fox News channel or something like that to get there. You can leave a viewer feedback or listener feedback on YouTube if you're listening to this anywhere. You can do that. So I have something to talk about next week. If you need any advice, if you want to share a win of the week, if there's a topic that's just been like really on your heart lately that you would like to get my perspective on, that helps because my brain is only like this. And eventually it's like I have nothing to talk about. So you guys really fuel that, which is why I appreciate the listener feedback. If you love listening to this interruption free on YouTube, you can thank our patrons or better yet, you can become one. 
we do, like I mentioned earlier, we do live streams there twice a week, and I'd love to have you over there. It's a lot of cool peeps in the community. Plus, we have a Discord where we're chatting and hanging out all the time, pictures and hauls, and I'm getting jealous of all their cool stuff that they have. And uh, I guess most of all, like I always say, you can just enjoy the heck out of this podcast, which is what I hope you got out of it. So on that, thank you for watching, and we'll, we'll find you. I think I'd have this down by now. We'll find you in the next Missing Pieces.